Scales and arpeggio certainly form part of pretty much everybody's learning journey on piano. However, do now you find that they're boring, repetitive, unrewarding? Then if you do, perhaps it's time to focus your practice time on other things. Let me share some of my thoughts with you. Are you sitting comfortably? Then let's begin. This is Tommy with Tommy's Piano Corner, the place for returning pianists, or indeed anybody who loves piano, to share some tips and ideas of how to get the best from this great hobby. If it's your first trip here, then please do think about subscribing. Simply hit the little icon in the bottom right hand corner of your screen now and it's all done for you. Now perhaps before I go any further, I want to be 100% clear that I think we do need to learn scales, okay? They're absolutely essential, not necessarily for technical reasons, but they're one of the first ways that we understand what constitutes a key signature and how those dots translate into the keys on the piano. There must be thousands of hours of videos on YouTube teaching you how to get better at playing scales, but for me, to be honest, once they fulfilled that initial task of helping us understand key signatures properly, then I'm less convinced that it's a good use of time to sit there hammering away at octave after octave of these scales. Of course, if you're still doing your piano grades, then you have little choice but to keep practicing them to get them to the required standard for each individual grade. However, once this restriction has gone, do you really need to keep doing them seven days a week, four octaves per scale all the time? I'm not sure you do. The need to practice scales religiously every day is probably something that's been handed down to us for hundreds of years. And as a result, I suspect it's been surrounded by sort of received wisdom and myth that people just don't challenge really anymore. I mean, for example, we're frequently told that scales are important because all music is based on scales. Well, this has not really been my experience. I think aside from Joy to the World, it's the only thing I know that uses a full octave as a scale in their melody. Similarly, being able to play a scale or hands together for four octaves, where does this happen except perhaps in Chopin's ballad in G minor? Therefore, what's the benefit of thundering up and down a G minor scale, four octaves of it, unless you're learning this particular piece? Naturally, music is based on rules, of course it is. And as I said earlier, I think that scales are really useful for helping to understand these rules, especially as they relate to key signatures. The next thing that seems a little mythical to me at least is that your fingering is based on scales. But again, it's not something I think is necessarily true. The fingering you'll use when you're playing a particular passage depends where you came from and where you want to get to and what effect you want to generate in that passage. Take for example the very popular Mozart sonata that pretty much all of us learn. You know, there's a good section of this that's little more than a C major scale in your right hand, yet it's not played using the C major scale fingering because in actual fact you want to start on a different note of that scale each time you execute it. So, if you've spent hours and hours and hours working on a C major scale using the traditional fingering, is that going to help you play this sonata? I think another myth is that scales are essential for helping you to develop good piano technique. Now certainly, in the beginning, they do play a very important role in, in your technical development. You know, they teach you how to keep your hands in a nice arched position with your fingers curved. They teach you how to pass your thumb under your fingers. They teach you how to move in and out on the keyboard to make up for the differences between the black and the white notes. But once you're proficient in playing them over a couple of octaves, is there really any great benefit to hammering away four octaves a time every day? Martha Argerich is a case in point. She's adamant that scales are not something that she does. 
I've seen this in a few places and I saw her say it herself in an interview in French on a YouTube channel some time ago where she said, je ne fais pas de gamme, which means in French, of course, I don't do scales. Martha Argerich firmly believes that you actually develop your technique by fixing the technical problems within the pieces that you are playing rather than by doing dry exercises such as scales or other things. Another interesting viewpoint that I found in Chun Si Chang's book, The Fundamentals of Piano Practice, that I'll link in the description for you, is that in actual fact, when you're trying to build technique, you don't really build technique by playing hands together. You build technique by playing hands separately. And he says the same applies to scales. There's far more value in playing scales hands separately than there ever is in playing hands together. And of course, this is something that also led me to wonder, is there any real value in continuing to persevere with playing scales for the sake of getting them faster? Therefore, if you don't really need to practice scales in any specific way, so for example, if you're not doing exams anymore, then why necessarily devote part of your precious practice time to just repeating scales? Of course, if you don't want to give them up completely, what you could do is to actually just focus on the scales that form part of the pieces you're using. So, for example, if you're using Chopin C-sharp minor waltz, then you would use, the, obviously, the C-sharp minor scale, but also the D-flat major scale, which is the key signature that's in the middle of the piece. Of course, there will be occasions when a scale actually does appear in a piece that you're learning. So at the moment, I'm working on the Allegro from Melanie Spanswick's Play It Again Piano Book 2. Here we have both a D major scale and a G major scale that appear in the left hand. So to help me get both of these scales more even, I've been using some of the scale practice techniques that I've seen in some of my favorite YouTube channels. The main one I'm using here for these scales is to use it in groups of notes, so a little bit like this. To be honest, I find practicing scales in a limited way like this far more interesting and rewarding than trying to spend, I don't know, 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes or whatever every day just rattling through scale after scale after scale as I had to do all those years ago when I was doing my grades. In summary, my advice would be to make sure that you definitely know all of your scales. You should be able to play any scale without hesitation and feel perfectly relaxed about it. But I don't mean you necessarily need to play them at any kind of great speed. Beyond that, I would say it's definitely your personal choice. If you enjoy practicing your scales, if you feel that they're adding value to your practice sessions, then by all means continue. However, if you don't feel that they're adding any value and you really don't enjoy them, then I'd say why feel pressurized into doing them every day if you don't need to do them for your exams? Of course, you still need to spend a lot of time working on your technique. I'm not saying you don't. But I'm more convinced with Martha Argerich's approach that you should work on technique from within pieces rather than by doing things such as scales. And clearly, Stopping practicing scales never did her piano playing any harm. If you're not already, then please do subscribe to Tommy's Piano Corner. Hit the little bell icon so you're notified of new videos as and when they're released. 
I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next week.